And all I see is this brother with a beautiful smile screaming, the masjid's open, the masjid's open. I'm like, what? Give a very special welcome to our brother. He's just about to join in, inshallah. You'll recognize his smile as soon as you see it. That smile, mashallah, it had me smiling from cheek to cheek. Alhamdulillah, absolutely beautiful smile. Our brother's joy. When he said, oh, there you go, we get the smile more than anything, mashallah. Assalamualaikum. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mashallah, how are you doing, bro? How, how are you? Well, uh, <laughs> I'm sleeping a lot less. I'm sleeping a lot less. However, alhamdulillah, just the adrenaline. First of all, bismillah, rahman, rahim, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now, Brother Musa, we love your smile, but that's all the audience can see at the moment. If you can just angle oh. your camera a little so that we can see your face as well, mashallah. There we go, mashallah. Uh -huh. The nur, the nur. As soon as you looked at the lamp behind you, it just went brighter. <laughs> mashallah. The nur is just <laughs> everywhere with you. Okay, mashallah. I'm going to hold it in my hand like this because I don't have my AirPod, my, um, my AirPods, my, my tripod's broke. Don't worry, so mine is I'm broke as well. My hands, inshallah, there's no problem for you, Habibi. Only for you, I will hold in my hands, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, may Allah bless you and reward you. Trust me, Ameen. people Ameen. are loving this, mashallah. So tell us what it's like. I mean, I know that you grew up in America. You grew up in Atlanta, right? Yes. And now you're in Qatar. How has that transition been from in America to now living in a predominantly Muslim country? What's the difference there? Well, alhamdulillah, it's a huge difference. Um, America is a beautiful country. Mm -hmm. America allows you to practice your religion freely. Um, and that's the beautiful thing about America. You're able to mm -hmm. practice your religion and, you know, go to the masajid, etc. But, you know, with living in America, you have a lot of things that are not really coincide with your way of life. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So with being in America, I mean, being in Qatar or in a Muslim country, not only can you work to provide for your family, but you also are in a very Islamic environment. And that's the key. Um, you know, we know our life is, our life, we live it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the deen. Mm. And we live it to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's our purpose in life. We're not here to get rich or be famous or anything like that. We're here to live a good life and live the way Allah and his messengers um, um, has, called, has called us to. It's that way we can meet Allah with the uh, Qalb and Salim. So it, it, it's a huge difference, man. Um, just hearing the Adhans, um, just being able to walk to the masjid no, no matter where you're at, you know. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it, you were running to the masjid that day, mashallah. That was... Ah, hey, that was and that's a see. story, that's a story within itself, subhanAllah. Um, but it's, it's just beautiful living in a Muslim country. Alhamdulillah. So... Um, how you you've been there since the start of lockdown, so I'm thinking it's been about three months now. Okay, no, 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 no. I've been okay. here since October. Okay. Oh wow. So it's been a long time then. Mashallah. Yes. So I've you've been, been there since months. October, and you were able to experience firstly the freedom of going to the masjid whenever you wanted. You know, living in a predominantly Muslim country where wherever you go, you're pretty sure everything's going to be halal. You don't have to question them. Hey, is that? contaminate never you mix it with this and nothing like that. you're sure about all of that never and then suddenly this big pandemic happens and the doors of the masajid are closed and then now tell us the story tell us what happened that day because when i saw that video wallahi it sent a rush through my heart i was like subhanallah i want to run to the masjid right now and i don't even oh. run that much <laughs> 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 Habibi, wallahi, um, I cannot tell this story enough because it just reminds me how electric I felt when I first heard the Iqama. First of all, I grew up in America, which is predominantly non-Muslim, and my father always made sure we was in the masajid. So we grew an attachment towards the masajid at a very young age. That's Very young Allah. age. And so even in America, we try to attach our hearts to the message me and my brother. Mm. Um, but um, when we came to, when, I, when, we, when we came to, because he, he's been overseas too, Muhammad, mm. um, several times. But anyway, living over here, 
you're even more attached because the massager are closer to you. They're like right across the street, you know, I, I, I distance, you know? Yeah. So just imagine, just imagine you're able to visit the most favorite place in the world, which is your most favorite place in the world. It's a place where I'm at peace, mm -hmm. uh, where I feel the most peace at. And then all of a sudden for three months, you just can't go. Yeah. So just imagine, just, just imagine, picture your favorite place, wherever your favorite mm. place is. It don't have to, maybe it's not the masjid. Maybe your favorite place is um, the basketball gym or maybe your favorite place is um, in an art room somewhere. Allah mm. I know, I know, I know where my favorite place is. Just imagine that place being shut down for three months, just suddenly. No, no, it's and nothing. Then, and then, subhanAllah, and then all of a sudden, because I didn't know. Let, let me back up a little bit. Let me back up mm. a little bit, inshallah. I did not know that June 15th, the massages were open. I didn't know that. I don't follow the news outlets and news media and things like that. So I was totally unaware that um, the Salah was about to start again in the massages. Yeah. So I'm in my room. I'm in my room. I heard the adhan, like normal. I am in my room, and I'm about to call the ikama. Mm. And all of a sudden, as I'm about to call the ikama, I hear, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. I'm like, wait. I said, wait, babe, is that the is that the ikama? That's not the ikama. She said, babe, that's the ikama. That's the ikama. Go, that's the ikama, babe. The bus is open. Oh my God. Mashallah, mashallah. And subhanallah, you think I was excited on the film? You should have seen us in the house running around like we were crazy, you know. And um, I didn't know about. I didn't know that I had to bring my mask. I didn't know that I had to bring a sajada. I didn't know any of that because I didn't know the rules. I didn't know it was open. Yeah. I thought, I, you know, I didn't know nothing. So anyway, I got my shoes and I'm running to the masjid, okay? Then I took my phone out. I said, listen, I, wanna, I want to capture this moment because this is a historic moment. Mm. For, the first time in, for the first time ever, the massage has been closed for this long, as yeah. far as I'm remembering history. In our lifetime, and then all anyway. In, in our lifetime, right? Yeah. So that's, it's a historic moment now that it's being opened up again. To me, that's a very special moment. June 15th is a very special day to me. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, because yeah. now that day, that day, the masjids are open up, man. It's, it's the house my of Allah was place. open again for us. The house of Allah was open. Mm. My most favorite place in the world was open up again. Okay, I'm, I'm like a big kid in a playhouse, you know? Like, wow, if the masjids open up again. So I, 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 I got my phone and I recorded the moment. And um, as you can see on the film, I'm asking the security guard to make sure, was that the ikama? Because I, I don't want to be out here for nothing. I can be in yeah. my house. I'm missing my salah, you know? <laughs> just to make sure. I don't want to miss my salah. Like, you know when yeah. something feels like it's too good to be true, so you just have to double check. Like, hold up. I, I, I'm not sure here. Exactly. Mm. This is mm. uh, exactly what was going through my mind. So I left the house. I saw the security guard, and I said, Hey, baby, was that the Ikama? Was that the Ikama? Please tell me that was the Ikama. He said, yes, yes. I said, Salaam Alaikum. I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go. I gotta go. And um, uh, that's why. That's when I flipped the camera. And, and I was being a little comedic at the end running, but I was really sprinting. I sprinted the whole way, even when the camera's off. And subhanAllah, for those who's watching, um, what happened was, after I filmed after i filmed myself running to the masjid i didn't have enough time to post it on my phone because i wanted to join the j jamaah mm. so i just cl i just closed my phone i pressed my button to close my phone i didn't have time to write anything on it i wanted to write something on it uh, i wanted to say something else as you can see i misspelled masjid because i was rushing I, I i made it as i was running yeah and um after salat al maghrib because I prayed outside after Salat the Maghrib. I opened up my phone. It was it was on my story. I, I didn't put it on my story. Oh. I didn't put it run. on my story. But it automatically jumped on my story, Habibi, you know? So I said, man, I was mad. I was like, man, I wanted to write something extra. <laughs> like, man. Right? I wanted to put the date on there and the, you know, something like that, you know? That and, video uh, needed no caption. It needed so nothing. Of, it needed nothing with it. Do you know what? I love the fact that when it was sent to me, I had no idea what was being sent or what the video was. And all I see is this brother with a beautiful smile screaming, the masjid's open, the masjid's <laughs> open. I was like, what? It was, I was like, wow. You know, that was absolutely incredible. I'm glad that you didn't write a caption or you didn't have a chance to write a caption at the time. Alhamdulillah, I think it's perfect. 
and another and another fact, mashallah, and another fact is Brother Ashraf, mashallah, may Allah preserve him and his family. Amen. Amen. Um, before he asked to see, before he asked to request to you know to send it out to, on his social media, I was gonna delete it. I was gonna delete it. I was actually gonna delete it. Because I was like, well, maybe, maybe I shouldn't be running to the masjid, or maybe, I don't know, I, I, is this funny? Am I too goofy? Blah, blah, blah. So, uh, I, it did, when, when he asked for it, because I'm, I'm naturally a funny guy. Me and my twin, if you guys know me and my brother, we are we just naturally goofy. We're goofy. We love to make people laugh. MashaAllah. Okay. And um, subhanAllah, I was going to delete it. I thought about deleting it until he said, Musa sent it to me. He, he was the first one. He said, send it to me. Um, he took it from my Instagram and he posted it. And then I didn't delete it. For him, he was, he was probably a motivational factor for me not deleting. I think it. that was the right choice for sure. Because for sure. <laughs> I know when I'm confident that when many people watch that video, it reminded them of how much they love the masajid, how much they love the house of Allah, how much they miss it, how much they miss placing their forehead on the floor, how much they miss the sound of the azan, how much they miss the scent of overbearing water from the brother next to them, how much they miss every single thing, how much they miss nearly slipping after doing wudu because someone didn't dry their feet. I miss all of that. I miss every single bit of it. <laughs> I miss I miss some of the brothers rushing to the salah because they have to make wudu or something. They're coming for work and you see them rushing, but it's a beautiful sight. Wallahi, it's a beautiful sight. I miss the and uncles I, telling me to move from the first row because it's their claim spot. <laughs> <laughs> and Wallahi, man, um, I was talking to a brother today and he was just giving me so many insights on a video that I didn't look at. I didn't look at it from his point of view of how when perhaps going to the masjid so often we lose the importance of it you know it becomes like um like a robotic type of thing so it becomes more like a tradition maybe or something like that but he said musa when i when i saw the video when you when you reminded people just how significant it is to run to allah SWT. and i was like man i didn't look at it that way you know, and just people, all of you who are on right now, just just reminding me, just give, give, I mean, just reading the messages, Habibi, about how it affected them and what the video meant to them. Over thousands of people, I still have not finished responding to everybody, and I plan to do it, inshallah. I plan inshallah. to do it to the day I die, to respond to every message that someone has given me, because, subhanAllah, it, it was so special to them. Like my video just running to the mesh was special to you. I was I'm overwhelmed till right now. I'm you know what what I think happened was when people saw that video, it became you were expressing what they wish they could do. And for many of us, we didn't even realize that we wish we could do that at that time, if that makes wow. sense. I think a lot of because... us were missing the masjid, but we had no idea how much we were missing it until we saw the pure joy on your face from hearing the Iqama. And I think that's what happened to a lot of people. That's where it hit home. It hit them in their heart. Like, mm -hmm. I had no idea I was missing the Masajid this much. You know, I think oh, that's yeah. what happened for sure. Now, I want to go back and to something. Yeah. Sorry, go on. You are yes. going to say something. I was just going to say one thing is that uh, some of the places around the world, the Masajid is still not open. Hmm. So I was receiving a lot of messages telling me that, listen, Musa, you, I can't wait till I hit the Iqama because I'm going to run like you. I'm going to be happy like you. I'm like, subhanAllah. So a lot of places like Egypt, they're not open yet, you know? So, no, no. Alhamdulillah, go ahead. Inshallah, all of the masajid are going to be open soon. Inshallah, we make God that Allah opens the doors and welcomes us back and allows us to pray in his house, in a congregation, with our brothers, with our sisters, with our imam. We, we're able to hear the muazzin again. Inshallah, we will make dua for this. Now, one thing that I want to come back to, which you mentioned earlier, is that your father used to take you and your brother to the masajid at a young age. And he instilled that love for the house of Allah in your heart from a young age. And you've grown up with that love. Clearly, we can see that, alhamdulillah. Now, we have a lot of people watching. Some of them may be single. Some of them may be uh, parents. Some of them... You know, maybe they've just started practicing more now. Maybe some have grown up Muslim, but 
they've not really felt a connection to the masjid, but now they want to have that connection. They want to have that same joy when they hear the, the muazzin uh, calling the azan. They want to feel that same joy and that same connection. Do you have any tips or any advice that you could give, number one, to the individuals, the singles, the adults maybe, the young brothers, the teenagers, the sisters, and number two, to the parents? Okay, so bismillah. Um, so number one, if we want to start with the youth, I think I think that's where it begins. Well, actually it begins with the parents. So let me start with the parents, inshallah ta'ala. Number one, the parents are the first people that the children learn from. Okay? Every small detail matter when you are raising your children. For the parents that are listening, every small detail matter. I give you an example. When I grew up in my household, on Saturday and Sunday morning, even, in, even throughout the week, we love to watch the cartoons. Mm. We love watching cartoons in the morning, right? But my father would not allow us to cut on the TV until we make two rakats. Subhanallah. No matter what time we woke up, if we woke up at 8 in the morning, if we woke up at 7 in the morning, we, woke, we were not allowed to cut the TV on until we made two rakat. And so we would go wake up, We'll go make wudu and make, make our fajr. And we were eight, nine. We were young, you know? That's one example. Another example is building an environment for your children. We were homeschooled as well, alhamdulillah. So by being homeschooled, he, he had imams come to mm. our home. Just Quran. on. MashaAllah. So that was our first class of our homeschool curriculum. Mm was to learn how to read Quran, learn this. He used to have the actually imam come to our house. And he did this for many years. Mm. I don't know when I learned how to read Quran. I said, oh, no, when, when I don't that's, know. That's I, how I, much I you were doing it. That's how much I was doing it. And, and yeah. back then, uh, when I grew up reading the Quran, I don't know when I learned it. So basically, to... the, the way that your father facilitated your, your education and your brother's education it made it so that learning the Quran became like learning a language for you. Because I doubt yes. you remember when you learned to speak English. I don't remember. No, I don't remember. Exactly. That's beautiful. Exactly. That's beautiful. So subhanAllah for the parents, every single detail matters. You don't have to be a scholar. My father's not a scholar. Mm. He doesn't even know how to read Quran. SubhanAllah. He took yeah, his shahada in 1979. He took his shahada when he was uh, almost 30 years old. SubhanAllah. He didn't, probably didn't have time to take away from his livelihood to learn how to read and stuff. So mm. he made sure that he did it for his children. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, um, um, for the parents out there, for the older people, your example, every little small details matter. If you allow your children to play and do this while the salah is going on, you're telling them it's okay to do something over the salah. So as they grow older, the significance behind making a salah is not there. They have to learn it by themselves once they mm. reach their age of puberty to learn how to love Salah. Whereas you can instill the love of a Salah in your children at a very young age. To the point where by the time your child is 10 and 11 and 12, our father didn't have to tell us to make Salah. He never had to tell us to make Salah, even if we didn't make it in the masjid. My father never had to say, did you make Dhuhr? Did you make Asr? No, we were doing this from such a young age, mashallah. That boom, we oh, it's Dhuhr time. Oh, it's Asr time. You okay, were just so automatically doing it because you loved it. And I think that's a key thing that we, we often neglect when it comes to teaching others about Salah. We'll, we'll teach, whether it's teaching an adult, a teenager, or our children about Salah, we'll teach them how to perform the actions, what to say, what to do, how to perform wudu. But very rarely, and I love that you picked up on that, do we teach them to love Salah? And the way that your father went about it, alhamdulillah, it truly shows that, you know, you have a genuine love for Salah. And I think that's a very important lesson that people will take away from today. It's, absolutely, it's something that I didn't even think about. Like, when you love something, you do it automatically. Like, you just do it automatically. It's not even a second question. It's because you want to do it. Your heart yearns to do it. It makes me think of this video. And I don't know why this video has been in my mind all day. There was a clip of a mother who gave her young daughter, maybe she was like two years old or something like that. She gave her chocolate. And she gave her candy. Mm -hmm. And the kid just keeps pushing it away and screaming like, no, no, no. 
And then she gave her broccoli. She's like, yummy, 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 yummy. And I'm just thinking, you're crazy. That's broccoli. Who wants to eat broccoli? But what she had obviously done from a young age is taught her daughter to love the good stuff and push wow. away the bad stuff. So similar wow. to what you're saying here, we should raise our kids and teach them to love what is good for them. And Salah is the best for them. So Alhamdulillah, I'm really glad that you touched on that point. And let me, let me make two more points and I'll finish with this, with the, with the parents, inshallah. The first point is this. You don't force it upon your children. Hmm. i give you an example. Your children may be playing and stuff. Your children may be watching TV. Children are children. Kids are kids. Even until they're teenagers, right? Just ask them to stop what they're doing to make salah and then continue what you're doing. Just stop what you're doing. Hmm. Make salah and whatever you were doing before salah, go ahead and do it. Enjoy. And, and it still is in them that every, not, no matter what I'm doing, the salah is the most important action at this time, point in time. Okay? That's the first point. Mm. The second point is that if you love the salah, then everything else will come easy for you. Why, why do I say that? Because we know the salah is miftah al-jannah. We know the salah is the key of jannah. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, if your salah is good, Allah will make everything else in your life good in the akhirah. All your good deeds, Allah will make good. And if your salah was bad, he will make everything bad. <laughs> Subhanallah. So we know that salah is the most important because, of course, we know that shahada mm -hmm. is the first pillar of Islam, but salah is second. They go hand in hand because you say your, you say your shahada, your salah, every day. Yeah. So um, salah is the most important thing. So if you learn to love the most important thing in life, everything else comes easy. So learning Subhan about Allah. Islam, reading the Quran, being in a good environment, all that stuff is going to come naturally with the love and affection of having salah. Now, for the children, alhamdulillah, for the children, you're not obligated to make all of your salah. It's no sin upon you to make your salah. But even when you're young, you should instill it in your heart to make your salah. And why? the reason why I keep bringing up salah, because this is the key to all things. If you have a good salah, everything else Allah will teach you. Allah will teach you how to do dhikr. Allah will teach you to love you. If your salah is good, Allah will make easy, facilitate easy for you the, all the other things that he loves. Sadaqah, zakat, siyam. But salah is like, the, is like the, the, the foundation of all good deeds. Yes. That's so a don't leave salah no matter what, inshallah. Even if you're late, even if you may have missed it for the youth, um, and, and, and take care of your parents. Okay, for the youth is to be good to your parents, inshallah ta'ala. There's a, there's a verse in the Quran, um, Surah Al Kahf, that we recited last Friday. That there were two parents, there were two parents who had they, they were righteous and they had a son, and he was not so righteous. And Allah replaced it, the, so the Khidr killed him, he slain him. Mm. And Musa salam, said, Do you slay an innocent person who has slain nobody? He's a child. How do you kill a, a child? He was, he was under 10 years old. And the Musa um, uh, Khidr explained to him at the end, we know the end of the story, the Khidr explained to him, listen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made these parents righteous people, but their son was not righteous. Mm -hmm. And Allah wanted to replace this son with another one in better in conduct, better in respect, better in honor. So it's very important that you do two things for the youth, inshallah. Number one, have good manners towards your parents. Please, this is so important, man. I cannot stress that enough. And number two, just take care of your salah. Even if it's not obligatory, take care of your salah, even at a young age, inshallah. Beautiful advice, mashallah. Jazakallah khair. Alhamdulillah. Do you know what? I feel, I'm just been looking at the comments as well while you've been speaking and people have been asking, please make dua for all. me. <laughs> people have been saying, please make dua for me that I become as passionate about my salah as you are please make dua for me that my salah improves so there's a lot of people that want to genuinely improve their salah and i love the one thing that you said which is that if you make your salah successful if you make your salah strong if you try and perfect your salah then allah will make the rest of your day successful he'll make the rest of your life successful the way that i, I look at salah <laughs> is for me it's a journey to allah Every salah is a journey to Allah. It's a journey to me connecting with Allah. And then at the end of that salah, I get to make my dua. And for me, the way that I see it is, I've just done everything that Allah has asked me to do, that Allah has made obligatory upon me. And then I've done more, which is voluntary. 
I'm, I'm hoping now that Allah is listening. I know that Allah is listening. Let me ask my Allah for whatever I want. Because Allah will give me whatever's good for me and He'll keep away from me whatever's bad for me. So that's the way that I see Salah. And I, I agree with you 100%. You make your Salah successful, you will see success in your life. Absolutely beautiful, mashaAllah. Now, I think we're going to be coming towards the end of this live stream. But Alhamdulillah, it's been absolutely brilliant speaking with you. I want to ask you any final words that you want to give to all the viewers, inshallah, everyone that's tuned in from around the world. I just want to say that I love you, man. Well, I love all of you. I have nothing else to say. I love all of you. And the fact that I inspired you by going to the message shows me that you all love Allah. SubhanAllah. It, it only shows me that I have so many brothers and sisters around the world. And I just want to thank everyone for uh, following me and for sending me these beautiful messages on Facebook and Instagram. I have thousands to respond to, subhanAllah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I spend maybe five hours. I, 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 I upset my wife all the time because I'm, I'm always in my phone responding to, to, to people. But I say, you know, these are not my strangers. These are my brothers and sisters. And I want to respond to them because they, they, they were inspired by me, subhanAllah. I'm an inspiration to someone. I'm just, I'm at awe. Habibi, wallah, I'm at awe. That me running caused all of this. Mm. Uh, but I just wanted to just, to just say I love all of you. That's it. And just just do the best you can. We'll lie. No, we're, not, we're not from the shiuch. We're not sheikhs. You know, we don't, we don't have the knowledge of sheikhs. And most of us are not half of the Quran. But that doesn't mean we cannot be close to Allah. Mm. It doesn't mean that we cannot be close to Allah. So love each other and just spread peace, man. Um, just peace and love, man. Subhanallah. To everyone, non Muslim and Muslim. Just, just spread peace. MashaAllah. Jazakallah khair, Brother Musa. It's been an absolute pleasure talking with you this yeah. evening. And I just want to say, from, personally from me, thank you again. Jazakallah khair for filming that video. Wallahi, it awoke something in my heart and I know that it did the same for many, many people around the world. We have no idea how many people watched that video, but I can confidently say it's in the millions because I know what happens with videos is they get downloaded and then re-uploaded and shared on WhatsApp and everything like that. And I just like... Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah that this is inspiring so many people. And I genuinely hope and pray that when whichever country you're in, when the doors of the Masajid open again, my brothers and sisters, we need to make it a habit for us and our family members that we regularly attend the Masajid, that we support the Masajid as well. The Masajid, you know, in many countries, they're not government funded. They're run on voluntary contributions. So we need to try and make sure that whatever Masajid, wherever we're praying, whatever mosque we're going to, we support our local mosque. And that's not just financially. We should be cleaning the masajid. We should be cleaning the inside and the outside. We should be making sure that the imam is okay, mm -hmm. that the caretakers are okay, that the muazzin is okay. We should try and actively gain a role in our local mosque because it's not just a place of prayer. It's not just a place to offer salah. This should be a community hub. And we need to treat it like mm -hmm. a community hub. A place where we go for inspiration, for education, for meditation. A place where we go to connect with Allah mm -hmm. subhanahu wa ta'ala and to connect with our community. When we go and pray salah in the masjid, my brothers and sisters, we stand shoulder to shoulder. Why? Because that improves our connection with the ummah, with our brothers and sisters. So we need to be there more often so that we improve that connection as an ummah. Far too many of us are divided. But when we go to the masajid, we don't see black, white, Asian, whatever. We don't see if, what accent somebody speaks with or anything like that. We don't ask anybody what their identity is. All we know is that that's my brother or that's my sister. I'm going to stand next to them and praise the love because I know that the reward is greater. And that's the beautiful thing. When we come together, the reward is greater, my brothers and sisters. Jazakallah khair. Thank you so much for tuning in today. May Allah bless every single one of you. I will see you later on. Take care. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for having me. Take care. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa barakatuh.